pull the mic and make a lot of noise. Okay. Yo. Alright, so we're, we're, we're talking about, talking about Cascade. What's going on, guys? What's up? Alright, it's alright. Spiller, here is the inspector. Wait. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, join and then we can get that the connect info you put in the chat, yeah, Blaze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not Blaze, Clavier? Uh, nah, I'm gonna win this one. It's the one. It's the one. It's the one. I guess I'll just kind of start off by saying, like, Cascade is a pretty linear and straightforward map. Uh, it kind of pulls a lot of design and a lot of, like, gameplay aspects from, like, different, like, all different cost maps, like Asheville, Product, Lakeside. Uh, you know, we, like, we're up to the point here, and we kind of see, like, it's pretty open. It's a pretty open space with a lot of rocks recover, and you, and you get, like, like, like a lot of, you know, a lot of space to work with here, and a lot of high ground, and you can jiggle through a lot of stuff. Um, it offers, like, a few different areas to try, like, you know, like, classes that aren't your combo to get in, like, your, your clank can like, get in through this cave right here, so I can play on the cave. Uh, you know, you have just this under area, which is pretty important. Um, I would say more so than, like, uh, you know, this and Nashville both have, both have an under, but this under offers a bit more flexibility as to what, like, your, your combo can do, and, like, kind of what your flank can do also. Um, Wait, this, this is, is a Halloween server. Am I in the wrong server? Yeah, you're in the wrong server. Oh, that's uh, the one I posted in chat. But um, I gotta say, like the most important thing to understand, like with Koth in general, is really just kind of making sure you're like following the three like major principles of like Koth is like you know hold together, push together, and don't feed. And that's like really really simple and like really really like boiled down like TF2 gameplay. For like cost but for the most part like it rings true because in any kind of situation where you're losing you're probably not following those um like points so like i said like if you lose like a scrimmer match you can probably like kind of watch and go back and be like oh we were doing this wrong the entire time or at this point we were doing this thing <coughs> kind of wrong um so i'm just kind of going to talk about like mids and like kind of a rollout and just kind of like holding and repushing and that'll be kind of it, and just like, just like different ways you can do these these things. Um, so just kind of like on a rollout, like I'm gonna start at spawn here. Like you just kind of defer to like go through the main area, and your soldiers kind of whipping everyone from a spawn, and then you just kind of want to take like this left side right here. Um, the rest of your team can kind of experiment, but having a plan and kind of what your team wants to do on a mid and adapting correctly is very important. Um, your demo medic pyro heavy can play behind this left side rock kind of looking for spam uh, and you just kind of like um, players are kind of looking like directly on point trying to find a lane to push across and you're just trying to flood in all together um, your demo and scout are kind of like denying this main and right area um, your heavy is probably gonna play on this left side this left side really really good for heavy or you can play over right. Typically what happens is your combo will roll out to this left side here. Your demo and scout will watch this and this. Um, your NG will make a dispenser, like a mini kind of setup, like pretty passive, kind of watching point, watching this exit. And your pyro will just kind of watch like things like, you know, bombing through or spy crossing or things trying to get through lower pretty, pretty passively. Um, and your teams can just kind of rotate to the right right here and start like working this and your demo will be like kind of right here working this angle or your heavy kind of works on this left side um you can send your heavy a few different places to play a few different roles like you know you can roll through main here and left out main you can end up on the right side just kind of like right here behind the fence or back here um in like the ramp um and you're just going to deny anything that comes through like this right side pretty passively like you can you know play this really passive right here kind of head touch things as they come down um, and then regress um, you can help fight lower if you're over here just kind of be ready to push across point and try not to peek too early or kind of by yourself so you don't get collapsed on or sniped uh, I kind of prefer like, playing aggressive as heavy on this map because it's super super rewarding and for the rest of your team it's really good um, like if you're playing heavy and you're standing like right here, like if you get a heavy right here on mid or like during like a repush, you're you pretty much won the fight. Reason being, 
It's pretty similar to <coughs> product. <coughs> in, in, or like Lakeside. In the sense where once your heavy kind of creates enough space on point to where like, you know, they can't really fight a heavy like a really good here. So they have to commit a lot of resources. And if you like have this right here, like you're pretty safe from like sniper. At least like in, in like the like cave, but that's kind of like on like your soldier and other classes to get on that, like your spy. Because if, if, like, if there's like a sniper in this like cave right here, or anywhere isolated, it's pretty much on your spy to get him right away. Um, it's really good for your combo to follow up and do good damage from the points elevated position. Uh, the biggest thing for heavy on mid is to get, like on like cascade is to try your best to be as proactive as possible. Um, alternatively, like you can send your heavy and soldier through your cave and coordinate your aggression to like drop down. This is kind of like a cute little like like sack or like feed play but i would i want to do it all the time because you're kind of easy to like deny and you know you, you can be sniped from like right here 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 and here and here there's a lot of spots i prefer setting the soldier and heavy lower um and you just kind of like so get your heavy down lower quick cause chaos with your soldier clean up things down here and fight um and it's just kind of like you're gonna coordinate some aggression to where you're gonna have your demo and scout playing right here, kind of just denying this space and not letting your demo like team get rolled. And by whenever your team's ready to walk up, you're kind of trying to sync up the moment where your demo walks across with like your scout, and at that time you, you're like soldier and heavy are busting through and getting on people and getting like a pinch kind of situation. Okay. Um. It's just kind of, you know, trying stuff out. And and, and if you, like, want to do that, like, right away on mid, sometimes it's worth it just to kind of send your team right to roll out, because then you can just have people go under right away instead of having to, like, rotate. But generally speaking, I think it's okay to just kind of play it like this. It's going to have your heavy. So would you out. want, so should I go upper when I, if I'm planning to sack for the mid or still go Oh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. Um... One way, if you see their combo going lower, one way to fight it is to have your own combo rotate to the right and send your heavy to fight lower with a full buff. If there are eyes on your heavy and soldier lower, you can have the rest of your team walk forward and crash onto their right side. Uh, you want the rest of your combo to kind of deny the right, you know, play not to peek, working your scout and demo to punish the over aggressors on point. And you're really just kind of trying to win a spam battle and you're listening and waiting for the two players lower to come up quick. And then your demo is going to sync up with your heavy and soldier by busting out. Uh, and oftentimes you might see a team playing pretty passive on their right. Don't ever be this team. Just like on mid because it's pretty like exploitable. And you can get some nice positioning on the left side of point if they lose your sniper on the mid early. And if they, and if that's the case anyway, like that mid's probably a loss anyway. Because they can't really like snipe your team pushing across here with no sniper watching them on like the bats or main area. Your scout really just needs, needs to be like kind of floating around point while looking to get on players that over aggress. And you're just kind of denying anything that tries to get on your meta demo. So make sure you're like staying buffed and using like your mobility to kind of keep things back. And cross like aggressively with your team when you're ready to go. You Like scout can be a really good set of eyes to direct spam on point. And you're just kind of calling anything that tries to get aggressive on point And call to rotate spam over to deal with players as they come in. Your energy has a few different places, like for, for the sentry on middle. Same as a telly, but for the most part, it's either like somewhere around your own bats or passive on the left or right side for the telly. Um, just kind of make sure like your energy watches under and helps your demo scout deny players pushing across point. Um, so make sure like you're playing energy, you're kind of listening to your like calls and you're ready to help get on threats with your demo and scout. It's pretty much like almost vital to have some sort of presence in the lower area of cascade since the mini sentry can deny the lower exit really well kind of with your pyro too and you can move it up once your team has had like point presence but you're also enabled to chip down and harass uh players pushing the right side with the mini and pyro passive so you can have like the mini watching is kind of right here watching the exit with your pyro and you know you're just kind of like sitting right here then you kind of you know poking people as they aggress with like your scout and demo uh, for the sentry, you know, you just got to make sure you're covering your side of point, helping deny threats. That should be the priority. Uh, you, you can try placing it on top of your sniper, wherever you try, try as playing. 
Because it's really hard for a soldier to get like any kind of high bomb in on mid if you're like a mini there. Uh, you can place it around main for the same effect. Just kind of be careful that, as it can die to like random spam if your combo rotation left or right. Uh, after you see your team kind of take space, as I mentioned earlier for playing NG, you can move your gun kind of on or, or onto or around point to help clean up or deny classes that might still like try to sell out for your players on point. So that's just kind of like NG's role on mid. And after like you win the mid, you want to say up something like I got the Spencer right here or right here, somewhere like on the point where it's easily like accessible. Uh, pit classes are pretty important, like especially sniper on this on this point in general. Uh, you have pretty large influence over mid fight. Uh, your sniper can roll out main. <coughs> you know, you get a pretty good sightline here. You can rotate left or right depending on where their combo is playing. You can play bats. Get a pretty good overview of the point. You can play cave. Um, just gonna watch point right here. It's pretty bad. You gotta be careful right here because you're really isolated and if like a spy gets on you really early, you're probably just kind of a free kill or a soldier might bomb you. But if your heavy's playing like right here, it's pretty hard for like someone to get you. So you just gotta watch your spy playing cave alone. Um, but you know, this is a pretty good sight line like way back here. You can see this whole left side. Um, right here's pretty good. Right here's pretty good. You kind of see like a lot of stuff that you can even do like the cheesy like, did they fix this i think they did like you can see like on point right here but that's, that's also like same problem as cave you're isolated and a spy can get on you pretty easily because you're so far away um your, your spy can roll out either across point lower through cave and you can try to like get on demo or sniper quickly i think it's really important to like try to find like a demo or sniper pick or a heavy pick early on mid but if you know if you don't want to play that aggressive, you can just kind of go back and call where your sniper is playing to give your sniper and team best information on how to like kind of position. Like if you know your, your sniper is not playing top right as heavy, you can like peek like you know right here pretty good and do some good damage. Or you can you know play a little wide and it helps your demo too. If you if you know the sniper is playing like over here somewhere, and you can just kind of peek this right here pretty good and pretty free and do a lot of damage. And just kind of hug this um, if he's playing over on that side, you know. Or on this side, like on like um, main or bats, you can just you know jiggle peek this and peek it, jiggle peek like over here and be hard to kill. You can jiggle peek over here, like on like the right a little bit. Like you're, you're pretty safe. Like you, you you can spam like right here. Like spamming pipes over here is really good too. Um, just kind of being able to quickly call and take down the sniper on middle is kind of similar to lake side in the sense that. It can open up a lot of space for your slower, more headshot prone classes to peek out. And if you're playing like really passive on the mid, it just kind of make, makes them auto lose the mid right away. Typically, whenever you're ready to push and get ground, you want to make sure your team is pushing together across the point. Don't stop on the point. Push across the point. Um, and you're like you're kind of calling focus fire um, a as you do. This is pretty easy as your demo walking on the point with the beam. You you can deal a lot of damage while res, like rest your team kind of fills. Like you have your heavy kind of right here. You know your scout will be playing with you. Um, and you just kind of have like your pyro and people watching to make sure like you don't get stabbed walking forward. Uh, you can set up like I said like a few different approaches to this. Like you can have like your soldier bomb and draw eyes if you're still alive, or kind of drop down from cave and draw eyes. Uh, you can you can delay your aggression a bit. And have your spy decloak behind them and then collapse on them. We can do the thing we talked about with the heavy and soldier lower, and just kind of delay your aggression and like crunch them that way. If you are on mid and you notice there's heavy and soldier, don't walk across point. And like if, if they, like, they like go under, it can open up a few ideas for like pushing on the mid. Like playing around under is pretty important, and every team is pretty different. So kind of experiment and scrim and see what kind of works best for you. Depending on the amount of lower pressure your team has, you can delay your pushes onto the point to bait the enemy team onto point and send players under to flood out and create a pinch. It's pretty important to make sure you have a class dedicated to watching under, as I said earlier. It's typically your NG and Pyro, or just your NG. And it's pretty important to make sure that your combo responds to a call if they have like classes going under, like a lot of them, and rotate to like really deny them if they're aggressive under. Usually, like if they're just sending like a heavy soldier or whatever, your heavy or your NG and pyro can kind of play passive while your uh, demi heavy and demo push forward on the point. Kind of the way to look at it 
is if they're going to send two of their key classes on like on a lowest possible ground on the map you kind of want to try to get us forward onto the point as possible and then deal with the players lower does that make sense it does yeah okay and i kind of like i wouldn't really recommend playing this middle passive you know like people like go to this range just kind of sit and park the bus <laughs> you know uh, the only real way to win from this position is that you pick off isolated feeders on point and you take ground after they lose like two or four players. Either in lower or just kind of pushing point alone. The key to this map is smart positioning on point and coordinated strong aggression. If a team go like goes in at the wrong time and like gets like caught off guard because their aggression was bad and they don't aggress together or like they fail to find any picks with their aggression it gets really easy to just kind of pick them apart and push as a team with player ad and you can just kind of ignore their position on point with numbers right so like if you're just kind of playing this passive here or just like you know they didn't notice like playing really aggressive and they like lose like three or four players you can just kind of wait and just you know catch off their aggression and just you know even though they have like you know they have players on point and you're playing you know either kind of passive right here or passive right here you can just kind of ignore oh they have like numbers that or like we have numbers that let's just kind of commit and flood it onto them and take a raw dm fight because we have you know more players than they do it's important you're doing this together and just kind of like you know focusing the same thing and that's just kind of like how mids usually play out Anyone have any any questions for the class or anything uh, important? Before I go on, just just kind of holding. All right. If if you have anything, just feel free to stop, and I'll, I can go back. Um, but usually, like after winning a middle or a retake on Cascade, it's pretty advantageous to hold on point and support your sniper the best you can. Your combo can play pretty much on the point and have good positioning to do damage on players as they walk up to try and like fight you. And you have like a lot of room to kite back um, into a more passive position if um, you see their combo walking up fast and they try Ubering. I would say in general, Cascade holds are really only good if you're forward holding with your team. And just kind of like in general, like, you know, this is like a, like a staple, like you could always like apply this to any context at highlander if you lose your sniper you don't want to forward hold ever like i think we kind of learned that playing upward like last week like the forward hold was like a lot worse on upward whenever your sniper was dead right so that's like the only time you don't want to play forward but if you are playing 8v8 with both snipers dead it is okay to still holding forward the general basis of like a forward hold is your heavy plays right here and you're just spotting your sniper you're just watching your snipers back um, you can get like if you want to get forward like you can I know I'm on still on top like I prefer stock on this map but like usually if you're just kind of playing this class is so slow oh. Whoa. So like you can play like right here and you're just kind of watching your sniper and you're pretty safe from like most sight lines like almost all of them like I think everyone really not most all and you're just kind of watching your sniper and if you want to play more aggressive you can like kind of just kind of make a silly little you know this is like a silly like oh they messed up really bad now we're gonna punish them really hard kind of kind of position but for the most part you're pretty good just kind of sitting right here and spotting your sniper and kind of pestering people right here too um, your spy is probably gonna wants to like go behind, and you're kind of gonna assume a comm spy role. Um, you know, you're, you're always calling where their sniper is. Your team wants to react to wherever their sniper is playing and play around it on point. If their sniper is called top right, your heavy should play to avoid the sight line and just kind of deny threats on your sniper while still kind of holding this like high left position. Your demo wants to be really aggressive, denying ground and playing on point, kind of on this right side. What makes this forward like Cascade so good, kind of the beauty of it, is you have the ability to rotate pretty freely with information as to where the sniper's playing, and you're still like maintaining a powerful forward hold position. And that's just like kind of why this map's so good, and why this forward hold's like so great, because you're kind of playing dynamic. 
and you're just kind of playing in all the time. Like, I remember playing Invite a few seasons ago, back when Irene was still around. Um, Irene was really good at board holding, because Boar would literally just be, like, you know, be on point, and he'd be playing, like, right here. You know, he'd be, he'd be playing super aggressive, because, you know, his team's always just kind of in on point, and you're safe for the most part. Like, you can do stuff like that. You, you can do some pretty crazy stuff. Um... And you, you have classes watching your back at all times, too, which is super good. And, like, your flank's also kind of in, too. Like, your flank, you know, you're, you can hold, like, on their bats right here. You know, you can play this kind of right here and play kind of in and deny this. Like, denying this is really good. Uh, you can deny, like, the cave area. Yeah, denying this cave is also really nice for your team. You're playing, like, soldier and scouts. So you're just kind of playing in and not dying. Like, just kind of locking down, like, places they can get in. Usually, like, flanks. We'll try to get him like right here, and he'll like try to spam you for free, just like kind of from right there, kind of on the point. So you got to make sure you're holding that down the best you can, and not dying. But like keeping your sniper alive to play like pretty far in is pretty free. You just got to make sure you have people watching his back. If you're on Uber Disad, it's pretty great for your demo to kind of trap off their like points of entry. And just kind of create like some picks before they start walking. Like, you can like you know trap like like this right here, pretty forward. If you're on this side, you can trap like the cave right here. It's kind of like there's a lot you can trap main. You know, there's a lot of a lot of good spots you can do. If you need, if, like, if you guys need to play passive for a few seconds after mid, you kind of just want to kind of play on this right side with a dispenser, kind of behind a sheet or concrete. If your med died and theirs didn't, you're t um, you're gonna need to like play play a bit more passive and force them into using an Uber. I'm gonna give you guys another like uh, evergreen Koth tip, and you can apply this to any kind of Koth map. So a pretty standard thing you can do is if they're down capping the point, like with five or six down, just let them cap and. Just Delay their spawns and then and then re just like kill those people and then retake it. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with how spawn timers work on Koth, but you know usually if you're if like you're dead and your team's pushing and then your team caps, your spawn gets gets extended, right? That's why like sometimes it's bad to cap if like your medic died like late. You kind of want to wait to like get your med up faster and then and then cap. Same principle kind of, a, kind of like applies there. You're just delaying their spawns and then you're taking point. If you if you have even like player numbers and your team knows you're going to lose point with like player ad or uber ad, just make sure everyone except like your medic and who like designate like a player to leave with your medic. Like heavy or pyro usually. I think pyro can get a lot of stuff done if like you're in like this little like sack wave I'm going to talk about. But what happens is uh so the situation is they're about to cap and you know they're about to cap you run your medic out like this little like drop down area with like a heavy or pyro um and it's kind of like a team team discretion and you just kind of play into the players on point and you're just trying to find as many trades as possible while they're trying to cap this makes the refight really easy on the point and catches you up pretty effectively if you're down like like numbers add so you're just trying to like you know kind of work that. Does, it, does that make sense for everyone? Like, it, it sounds kind of weird. So I just want to make sure you guys understand like what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. Do you have like classes in particular that should sack into them? Should we Every, run into a situation like that? Everyone except your your medic and either heavy or pyro. And the the goal is you're just trying to find as many trades on point as possible, and that can be like you know like. Your scout can like try to kill like a pyro, or like if you can kill a demo, that's great. Because the thing is, like you know they're gonna cap, right? And I we like I talked about how like spawn timers are on Koth. So if you can like kind of bot in with your team and get out all the way to spawn with like your medic and pyro or heavy, uh, and they cap, you're gonna have a faster spawn timer than they are, right? So they're gonna have like pretty bad number at if you kill like and trade like a three for three, right? Because they'll be down three players, and by the time, like, those three players are... If you're, you're three are up, their three will be down, and you'll have, like, pretty good numbers that had to kind of, you know, bully your way back on the point. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. I got it. If your team is getting ready to push, or I'm sorry, if a team is getting ready to push into you guys and you're both even, like on, on Ubers, just make sure you're keeping aggressive and try to make them use as early as possible and just kite back and re-push onto them in the exchange. Like the beauty of playing forward on this map, you know, is it's a lot easier to kite back aggressively than just passively. Because if you if you just kind of look look behind you, right? So if we're playing like really aggressive and we know they're playing right here and you're just kinda of like making them use by the time they get like to this little health kit. Like look how much room you have just to kinda of like run back. Like that that's a lot, and then you just kinda of flood back in as a team. However, but like if you're like like right right here and playing a bit passive like right here as a team and they Uber and you can kite back like you know not as far and you're all the way out and you can't really like refight effectively. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So if you don't have Uber, you need your medic like easily available to back out. And just kinda of be ready to bait their team onto point, back up heal up and get ready to crash into them as a full team again like again hold together push together like you're out together and then you're back in together the goal here is to see like how many picks you can get while they cap and sometimes that just kind of means like they just die outright and you hold and reset forward okay this is really important for your medic if you're gonna leave mid from a fight two things like leave all the way to spawn and leave like this is probably the best spot to leave right here. Like if you're like leaving for like, you know, you got lost a point or your team's like doing a little like sack like we talked about, like leave right here and watch kind of like right here for like a spy or like right here for a spy. You're just kind of out all the way to spawn. Um, you really don't want to linger like on like the left or right side here. Cause a lot of times I see teams, they'll back up and linger right here. And they'll get bombed overhead and die. Or like they'll get collapsed on by like a flank member and die because they linger too long. So just kinda don't even hesitate to leave early if your team's like losing the fight pretty badly. If you see teams who linger in concrete, you can do the same thing. Like and I see a lot of high level soldiers do this, like as they're capping and you see them backing up, you just high bomb right over here and you just <laughs> land right on whoever's backing up and got caught right here or like kind of right here. And it's pretty easy to land like a couple rockets right here and do like 200 damage or something. And they they should be hurt too, so it's even more like free free picking. Mm. And like, well, that happens too. Like your your sniper, you kind of like if you see them leaving concrete, your sniper can take this angle really wide and just kind of like get people as they're as they're leaving. You get like a couple good shots right here too. And that's pretty much like kind of kind of holding the point, right? Does, does that make sense? Is there anything, yeah. Is there anything I need to go back over? No, I think so. Uh, I think I got most of it. Okay. Um, I will say, like, if you're playing demo, <laughs> uh, I just say, uh, there's a good thing you can do. So if you see people bunched up, like right here, like. Just spam pipes and there should be like like a dispenser right there and if you hit that dispenser with like a pipe it's just gonna be like destruction yeah so definitely like kind of be aware like if, if, if people get bunched up right here it's just gonna be like murder for your team pretty much all right sorry excuse me i have like a all right we're good all right, I'm gonna talk about repushing. Do you guys have any questions for holding before I go on? Do I need to be more clear about where you guys want to play? That's all good. Okay, cool. So repushing on this map can be very difficult because the forward hold is so good. Usually, I prefer to repush from the left, and this is pretty typical. Like this is kind of like the default. Um. Although, like, if your team is taking a dry fight or kind of walking up the point, you can come in from my left. Like, I'm just going to say, like, it doesn't matter which side you repush from. It just matters that you want to get to the point as quickly as possible, right? Uh, this map, you know, it's, it's not like product where, say, you know, if you, if you repush from concrete as, like, a combo, that's, like, obviously not a good place to push from, right? However, like, every side is viable here like left is good right is good main is good it's all it's all pretty good um 
the only like issue with going right that I don't like is that you're eliminating a pretty potent like sight line like right here. If your sniper's playing forward, like you round the corner, it's just like you know that. This 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 is why I don't like it right here. Um. And, and also, you can't get blindsided by a soldier bombing around this corner, you know. Uh, left still has a pretty potent one too, though. Like, there are potent sight lines here, but like, it's 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 less less of a risk, you know, if you're going going left. And there, there's way there's better ways to beat it here too. So like, you know, I'm talking like if a sniper plays like right here, you can see pretty deep here, right? Like, this is not what you want to be looking at. However, you know, if your combo and team is left. You have access to like the cave and the cave is really good because you can just get like your, your soldier up there and your soldier can just spam like whoever's sniping right here you can spam the sniper and they have to look at you like if, if your soldier is spamming right here like what do you guys think happens like their pyro is going to look to like stop the soldier from shooting rockets at his team right that, that's just a common reaction and that and that opens up a lot of a lot of time for you know your spy to get in on, on point, which is really good. And if they don't deal with like your soldier, like okay, yeah, I'm just gonna four rocket your sniper and walk away and get buffed. Okay. So, I think just kind of overall, like I have preference for the left for that spam angle and like cave control and the flexibility of if you see a sniper early, like usually what happens is you just kind of like hold this wall. And you just go right here, and then you're in. Like, that's just kind of like what your combo should be doing. So don't like, make sure like if you're walking, don't go too wide because you know, you're right in the sight line. You can just kind of hold this wall, rotate main, check for, like a spy like right here, and then just kind of walk, and then boom, you're there. Makes sense. And I'll and I'll, I'll kind of go over like right too, but I kind of want to talk about like how repushing is kind of the same thing like. It's just a mid, like it's all it is. Like repushing on Koth is on like on like Cascade and in general is pretty much just a mid. Um, the only exception is if your soldier's holding cave, like your demo has a lot of room here to work with now because your soldier is holding this down, and this area should be clear, right? Uh, if you call their sniper cave, or if you see a sniper up here, you need to get on him ASAP. Like, if you're like a class you can, like that has like the capability, do it as soon as possible because the last thing you want to happen is like you know you're all like working really hard to get on point. You have a really really good push, and then like your sniper is just up here like picking off like your key classes. Like he kills like a heavy and he kills like a demo, like a med. So definitely make sure like like if you're playing spy or if you're playing soldier. Like scout can get up here too, like you're, or someone like just needs to get up here and like stuff him or stuff this angle right away. Like, you, you can spam it too, like pretty hard and get him out. Um, so that's kind of like the biggest thing you gotta watch out for is like a sniper hiding in cave. Uh, if your team wants to repush on right, it's usually best done if you're confident your spy or flank can kill their sniper and open up this corner, and they're down a few players. If you have Uber at or, or like their sniper is dead, you know it doesn't really matter which side you go from. Like, this is perfectly fine um and like if you're even you can take this this angle wide and usually the sniper will just die in the uber if you just kind of cut them off right here for free if you're fast on them again like i mentioned before it doesn't make or break like your map depending on where you repush from it's a lot similar to like product or like side you just want to want to get the point you gotta make sure you're getting there fast for the most part though, like in an even Uber situation, like 9v9, I think it's just easier to push from left and right because you have the op like the ability to just kind of like dip right here. Um, if you see a team passive holding, you can come in from anywhere. Like same thing. Just make sure you're kind of in together and stick to like the, the things we discussed earlier about repushing the mid, like repushing in the mid as like a similar like, you know, fashion, right? Whenever you like take a dry fight, you, you guys know what that is, right? Yeah, without Ubers. Yeah, okay. So yeah, without Ubers. So it's very crucial for your team to get as much space as you can, and then have your demo and spam classes create enough pressure to lock them from re effectively like repushing in for free. So it can just kind of be like, I think we talked about like your heavy. We're just gonna be playing like right here, right? 
because once you get heavy right here, it's hard for me to push. So your demo, that you, you can stick off like, you know, these rocks right here. You can stick off point. Like, your goal is here just gonna make sure like things can't like run at you and they just die right away if, if they try it, right? Uh, you just really gotta ensure like nothing can bot in and recontest without losing their life and it's pretty critical for your spy to find picks on their sniper as he isolates himself as, as they back up. Cause he'll like back up in the main right here or back up in the bats. And then like I mentioned before at like a high level like if a soldier is not using a banner just always go for a chase play onto hurt players as you're leaving. Like it can be as simple as like concrete right here like you just kind of like bomb over the top and land on a hurt player. This will be really good, and it usually works because if they'll be, they'll see you coming if they leave really early. Because they'll be like right here, right? But if they like, you know, as I said, linger, they'll be looking like right here, right? They won't be looking right here, unless they're like, you know, gods and cheating, probably. But <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, you can usually find a good kill in that transition, like you know, I said, like your spy can be close, like right here if they leave main. You know, just kind of oh yeah you can climb up this too like right here is pretty good just kind of make sure like watching your spy is decloaking like around here conversely I, kinda, I said i said that too like you know whenever you're backing up like i wouldn't go this way i just kind of go like right through here and watch for like a spy do like a little spin and then just kind of leave either right here or right through main and that's pretty much it for like cascade it's not really like you can do sacks. It's supposed to be just kind of like you're trying to find like a sniper pick most of the time. Um, you guys have any, any have any questions? I think I get most of them. Okay, yeah. Really good heavy map. Yeah, it's a lot of coordination, a lot of playing off picks, and just DM after yeah, that. Well, so also, like, you heard demo like you can spam point like for free, for, like like right here. Like this is really good. You just kind of jiggle peek right here. Yeah, this is pretty good. All right, I talk about like right here. Pretty good. Uh, for the most part, you know, like pretty stock mid. You like see if I can like run it right here. They come in main. Do do do. Either come in this way, or you come in this way. Uh, your demo and heavy you kind of play on this left side right here. You're kind of looking for spam. Your demo is denying this right here. You're not letting anything cross right here for free. Your heavy is walking right here. If you see a sniper, just kind of back up and wait and play this rock kind of passively and then go. And then just kind of try your goal. Like, if you can get heavy right here, it's where, where you want to be. Right? And then, like, your, your demo is scout denying this right side right here. Like your soldier, you can kind of either play lower, you can play in your own cave and hold your cave. You can go quick and try to bomb over and try to land on them as you're playing passive right here as your team walks, walks quick. There's a lot of flexibility you can do. Your sniper, you can kind of play like wherever, like you can play, you know, play up here on bats, take like a shot and drop down. You can play main, you can rotate here, you can rotate here. There's, there's a lot of good places you can go. Yeah, a lot of interesting positions on this map. Yeah. So I think a lot of it is like experimenting too, and just kind of seeing what works for us as a team. Yeah. So I, I would try like there's a lot of stuff you can do with heavy and lower. Like it's just kind of like you're kind of going down, and you know you can kind of control coordinating. But setting a heavy like 450 down here and like getting control of lower is good because once you like can sneak it up with like your demo walking across point, you can just catch people dropping off right here and mulch people for free. Just gotta like kind of watch your spies, like you know, try and decloak on on the rocks. Like they might try to like get you quick, like right here. So if you're just kind of sitting and not watching anything, you just kind of you know spray spray that really quick, or spray kind of up here really quick, and you kind of walk forward and watch your sniper. But if he's not like playing like right here, right here, it's good. After heavy tries fighting you right here, kind of like you know just kind of keep going this way and hold this area. Uh, one one funny thing you can do. As Pudis. I think you can still do this. Or is it? You can, you can head glitch this. 
It, it, it takes a while to get it set up, though. But no, it, it's pretty good. All right. I'm going to stop recording unless you guys have uh, questions for me. No, so I think it's about putting it into practice now. Okay, yeah. You just got to remember, like, the important thing they said. Like, if you, if you see them, uh, I'm going to stop recording.